We want to say happy birthday to Larry Legend, the former Celtic great, turned 60 today. Bird was a three-time league MVP, two-time finals MVP, and 12-time All-Star. It got us thinking in our uh, morning meeting, will we ever see another white superstar on Bird's level, Max? Yeah, of course we will. I mean, listen, um, you, just, you, you take just North American Caucasian players like Steve Nash and John Stockton, not quite on Bird's level because they're shorter, but they were some of the best point guards of their generation. Of course, we will see other, you know, uh, American, Caucasian, I suppose, uh, European American uh, superstars. Eventually, we'll see more than one, Stephen A. Smith. I'm not so sure. I mean, I definitely think that we'll see European stars of lighter pigmentation. But when you talk about the United States of America and the options that you have available to you, I mean, the fact of the matter is there's brothers on every street corner. I mean, uh, every park, you know, balling out. And when, and, and a lot of times when you see white American players, yeah, they can play. There's no doubt about it. But in terms of that want to, meaning wanting to go for it, there are so many options available to a white male individual in the United States of America. There are times that I question, you know, we got better options, we got baseball, we got football, we got, we got all yeah, of this. You know what, Stephen now, A. Smith? I'm not one. The NBA, sure. the NBA is such an appealing place to work. It's not full contact like football, I guaranteed agree. contracts, I, I, lots I of agree. money, fun to play. That if you <laughs> can, it's almost not an exaggeration to say the right. following. Everyone right. in the world, basically, who can play in the NBA, mm -hmm. does play in the NBA, and it selects Let me make you fight. laugh. Let me make you laugh. Let me let, let me make you laugh with what I'm really, really trying to say. It's not intentional, and it's not and it's not insidious in any way. It's all in fun and love, but it's almost like reverse discrimination in the United States of America. It's like we got the black dudes, we got the Europeans, okay? You know, like the white dudes from America, are they, they got a harder way to go. To are get you saying that the, the NBA, NBA is missing? And to really make some noise. The, you, <laughs> it's hilarious. Are you it's saying the NBA is missing a good old-fashioned uh, North American it, white dude in the league? Oh, is that what you're uh, saying? You, you know what? Yes, I am. Mm. I really, really believe that. That uh, let me tell you something. If you can find uh, Larry Bird, a white count, right? American superstar, it, I'm t it would be special. I think the league would love it. I think everybody would love it. I just think it, it's, it's kind of harder to find. Right. There's so many options. All I right, just, all right, all right, all right. Is Carmelo a ball hog? Phil Jackson was asked about Mel in an interview with CBS Sports and says that he can play the role that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant played in the team's triangle offense, but he believes that Anthony sometimes breaks a team rule by holding on to the ball for too long. Carmelo, a lot of times, wants to hold the ball longer than we have a rule. If you hold it past two seconds, you benefit the defense. He has a tendency, a little bit of a tendency, to hold it for three, four, five seconds, and then everybody comes to a stop. That is one of the things we work with, but he's adjusted to the triangle. He knows what he can do, and he's willing to see its success. Stephen A., you have any problems with Jackson's comments? Well, of course I do. Um, I have profound respect for Phil Jackson. 11 championships are 11 championships. But I don't like him very much. And I think that I need to say that. And here's why. Phil Jackson has been called many things. He's been called the Zen master. He's been called the brilliant basketball coach, brilliant basketball mind an ultimate champion, uh, the best coach in basketball. But there is one thing that Phil Jackson has never been called, and it is absolutely what he is. He's a bully. No one's ever called him that. I'm going to today. Let's take into account the fact that we need to ask ourselves the question, who the hell does Phil Jackson think he is? Phil Jackson does have 11 rings. Um, Six of them came with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Five of them came with Shaq and Kobe, got three, and then Kobe with Gasol. No one has rolled the coattails of a superstar the way Phil Jackson has. Don't tell me that the Chicago Bulls don't ultimately win a championship had Doug Collins remained their basketball coach. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from the greatness of Phil Jackson because there's something to be said about, you know, uh, not messing up what you have, Max. 
The problem is, when have you heard Phil step back and exude and display humility in talking about how lucky he was to have Michael Jordan? How lucky he was to have Scottie Pippen? How lucky he was to have Dennis Rodman? How about a Tony Kukoc? How about a John Paxson? A B.J. Armstrong? A Steve Kerr? How about that? When have, you ever talk, when have you ever heard him talk about that? How about when he got Kobe? Now, in fairness to Phil, they didn't win when they had Shaq and Kobe until Phil got there. But at the same time, you won when you had them. And then Mitch Kupchick pulled off the heist of the century when he got well, them look, to get rid of Kwame Brown Phil Jackson, to get Pal Gasol. I mean, come on. Phil Jackson come may on. be a bully. Nobody I don't ever see, says this Phil about Jackson him. may be a bully. I don't see how it comes out in this respect. I mean, uh, he knows the triangle better than anyone. And when he says, I'll take his word for it, that Carmelo's holding the ball too long to be less than optimally effective in the triangle. Now, Carmelo should be able to run the triangle. He can score from the perimeter. He can post up. He can get his teammates open looks and all those kind of things that Phil Jackson wants him to do. But if Phil says he's holding the ball too long, fine. Because Carmelo's not on his best day as good as Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. In fact, he's not as good as Scottie Pippen and, or Shaquille O'Neal. He's not as good as any of those top flight guys that, that Phil Jackson's had in the past. The, the, it's an argument between Pau Gasol at his best and Carmelo Anthony, I got news. The point is, of everyone I just mentioned, That's the, only one, the only one to have a championship without Phil Jackson, the only one is Shaq, and he got one. He got it with Dwayne Wade, who had the greatest finals of anyone since Michael Jordan had his, among his great finals. So with another top three or four player in the league who went bananas in the finals, Shaq got one. Kobe never sniffed another championship without Phil. Neither did MJ before or after. Neither did Pippen yeah. in spite of playing when he still had something left on good teams. There you go. Neither did Gasol. I mean, so Phil Jackson has there something to do with that. Yeah, that, who said he didn't? I mean, what am I talking gibberish here? Well, who said that Phil well, Jackson coach deserves he has no great credit? Did who I won say championships? that? Did, did, no, no. Excuse, excuse me. What coach had the players he had? And by the way, let's talk about Greg Popovich, for example. Greg Popovich don't even want to do interviews. He's mad he's got to talk at yeah. halftime. He's mad he's got to talk during the, or rather during the games. Okay, he barely wants to talk to the media on a day to day basis. When the man gets coach of the year, the players have to come out and get him to hoist the trophy. And when he has the trophy, they run away because he tries to give it to somebody else because he wants no credit. But Phil sitting now with real, everybody from Charlie way, Rose quick. to ESPN and everybody else because and he never. If you want, talks about all the other guys and what you, they did for him. He does Never sometimes. Does he, that. Sure, he does. But 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 if what? you want to get down on Phil Jackson for something, you should be down on the fact that he's so insistent upon a culture of the triangle as the basis for his offense. I mean, Greg Popovich it uses a word triangle today's sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't work. That's in today's the thing game. to be down on Phil Jackson about. No, what I'm down on him about is that he's so quick to get on other folks. This is his third year here. Is Melo the reason he walked into this season with a 49 and 115 record no. in his two-year tenure or that he couldn't build a bench? Is Melo the reason for that? Phil Jackson, is Melo the reason that the man has been on two road trips and they were L.A., the Clippers, and the Lakers games last year? Is that Melo's fault? No, but he is holds it the ball a little too long sometimes. That this guy can't is seem to assemble I understand that. But listen, we all know that. Allen Iverson held the damn ball, too. It didn't stop Larry Brown from getting him to the finals because you built a team around him. What has Phil Jackson done? All I'm saying to you is this. I respect the man as a great coach. He's an 11-time champion. But the arrogance and the willingness to bully people when you're always talking about what they do instead of what you don't do. Phil Jackson is a great coach. He is a novice as an executive. He is a novice right. as a leader for the Knicks franchise. 13-time champion, fact. too, as a player. But yeah. That is a fact. fact. We got to move on. Okay. The ESPN Week 14 NFL Power Rankings are hot off the press, and Stephen A's favorite team remains on top. But behind the Cowboys, the Gronkless Patriots moved up one spot to number two after a win over the Rams, and the Raiders dropped one spot to number three after their comeback win against the Bills. Both New England and Oakland are 10-2 and two this season. Max, yes. do the Raiders deserve to be above the Patriots? No, they don't. Look, some of this is, you know, anticipating the trajectory of the teams and Gronk goes down and all this. I get the arguments, but the Patriots are a two-loss team that has been for most of this season until recently, really, 
perceived as the juggernaut of the NFL. It was going to be the Patriots in the AFC, and could the Cowboys keep this up, or would it be the Seahawks? And the Broncos kind of lost their way. They got banged up in the secondary. But the Patriots were the team. Molly, you, and others were telling me all year, you know, uh, look at Tom Brady's having the greatest season yeah, ever. Yeah, that was me. Now, now, yeah, they're down Gronk, and they're not looking as good as they did earlier in the season. They're still a two-loss team based on the resume and everything we know about the teams at this very moment, not just anticipating what may happen in the next few weeks, but right now, the Patriots should be ranked ahead of the Raiders. <clears throat> Obviously, you're wrong. I disagree with you, but what else is new? Uh, it's one of those situations where you look at the New England Patriots right now, the absence of Gronk. Uh, obviously is going to have, uh, you know, obviously could have a detrimental effect on them. Will they get it together? Sure. They find ways to win. But it's one thing to find ways to win. It's another thing uh, to be and appear to be such a juggernaut that everybody's hearing your footsteps and they fear that you're coming. The, the Patriots are at the top of the heap in everybody's eyes with folks coming along the way. But Oakland is not tippy-toeing. They're stomping. With Derek Carr leading the way with this passing attack that's, attack, that's a top three um, in the game, with an offense that's a top four in the game, and, and, and more importantly, with their comeback abilities and their willingness and ability to win on the road, I think right now in terms of a momentum, you've got to look at the New England Patriots and say to yourself, nope, you know, they got to play second fiddle to the Oakland Raiders right now because New England – they got to bend but don't break defense. They'll find a way to get things done, but at the same time, it's one of those situations uh, where their defense is not elite. It's not stout. And with going against Oakland's offense, which is on, and, and with their defense being on a come up, I think the fact that you've seen Khalil Mack really take the bull by the horn and really starting to do his thing, combined with Bruce Irvin and the rest of the crew and what the offense has been able to do in terms of coming back from uh, early deficits, I, I just think Oakland has the, the, the edge right now. I yeah. consider the Oakland Raiders to be the number one team in the AFC at this moment. You know, this used to be in boxing years and years ago, in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, there was a big argument about who was the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world, Stephen. I'm sure you remember Pernell Whitaker or Julio Cesar yeah. Chavez, right? And Chavez right, would overcome right. all these early obstacles and deficits in the fight and come back and knock people out. And they didn't know if Pernell could do that. You know why? Because he was just winning every fight by a lot. And no one could really put an obstacle in front of him. And given the choice between those two, I'll, I'll take just the better option. Uh, the, the Patriots don't have to mount fourth quarter comebacks because well, they are better in most facets of the game against most teams, most well, seasons, at most times of the year. And that, that's the, it's true qu now. Qu no, 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 no. Question. Who won the Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar Chavez fight? Pernell Whitaker, but they called it a draw. Uh, no, no, no. I asked you who won. I, told I didn't you. ask you what your feelings were. My feelings were that Whitaker did not count, win. A. It was a draw. No, it was a draw. So, uh, no, no, wait a minute. Why was it a draw? Why was it a draw? It was a draw. Corruption? Because Julio Cesar Chavez, Julio Cesar Chavez, you understand, had that ability to find a way to finish no. you off. No. And what I'm saying to you is Pernell that. Dominated what I'm the saying end of the to fight. you, listen. Well, look, he dominated the end of that fight. I thought he should have won, too. Oh, but okay, I use so the operative word should. But I'm just, I, I'm using your analogy. I know you're trying to block me from speaking because you don't want me to educate you. <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make is that here's the deal. It was a draw because of the very analogy that you use. That punch's chance, that ability to find a way to come back, no matter what adverse circumstances are presented to him, made you sit there and say, we ain't giving him the loss, which is why I'm not giving Oakland mm. a number two slot. Lot. I think they're the number one team in the AFC because somehow, some way, they keep finding ways, and I can't ignore that. Oh, the Oakland Raiders are better than I thought they'd be. Their defense is getting better. They have a quarterback. I, 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 I make a, I made a boxing analogy because I made it the other day. Derek Carr is like a fighter built for, or, or the Raiders with Derek Carr as the quarterback and those receivers are like a fighter in the old days built for 15 rounds, going to knock you out in the championship rounds, 13, 14, 15. But, you yeah. know, they're coming from behind. They're in these tough games the coming from with behind. Your argument, and the Patriots the the, are not the because they're just argument. winning. Because they're better. The problem, the, the, problem, the problem with your argument is that most folks don't remember when boxing went 15 rounds. 
Well, that's their problem, Stephen A. Smith. Wasn't it a great yeah, time? Yeah, we know. We know. Far be it. Far be it for us to, 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 to get where you're coming from. 15 rounds. Right. Uh, how old were us? How old were you and I when boxing was 15 rounds? How old were uh, we, I, was I don't know. I was probably about 15 or something like that when it went to 12. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But long, that's the Raiders. Long, long the Raiders are the great puncher who comes back in fights. And the Patriots are just, you know, Floyd Mayweather or someone like that. They just dominate you the entire, they're just better. Except they have the offense too, unlike Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> All right.